Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Shall we start? A 50 year old female presented to ER with complaints of headache since two days. On initial 10 second assessment, airway is patent, no pooling of secretions, breathing, respiratory rate was 16 per minute, saturation 98% in room air, air entry bilaterally equal. So coming to circulation, BP was 200 by 100 millimeters mercury, pulse rate was 86 per minute, or peripheral pulsations equally felt bilaterally. At this point, two IV cannulas were secured. Coming to disability, GCS is E4, V5, M6, bilateral pupils equal and reacting to light. Exposure, she is febrile, uh, GRBS was 101 mg per deciliter. Pain score was 6 by 10, so on injection PCM 1 gram IV stat was given. Coming to history, uh, 50 year old female with no known comorbidities presented to ER with complaints of headache since two days. It was frontal, dull, aching in nature. No photophobia, phonophobia, uh, aura associated with it. No history of any vomiting, blurring of vision or fever. Uh, she was initially shown in a nearby hospital. From there, they noticed a BP of 210 by 100 millimeters of mercury and was referred here. Uh, we had done an ECG. <coughs> ECG was showing uh, normal sinus rhythm with heart rate of 86 per minute. There was a left axis deviation. Uh, we had done a VBG showing pH of 7.45, PCO2 of 40.3. Bicarb of 23, lactate 1.2, sodium 136 and potassium of 3.9. Okay. So history, anything else you wanted to ask? Like we have a patient, a middle-aged lady with complaints of headache for the last 48 hours, right? One important point in history? Uh, past history of any uh, yeah. headaches. It's very important, no? Like uh, is it a new headache and the, is the nature of headache similar to what she has had previously? What's the relevance of such a history? If there is change in severity or um, type, then we have to take a CT brain. Mm, because our etiological things which we are going to suspect are going to change. Basically. That's the basic thing. No? If it is a recurrent kind of history, she used to have the similar episodes, then we are thinking about more like a benign cause and things like that, no? including migraine and things like that. So, so uh, the history of similar complaints and nature of headache in the past is very important. Anything else in the history? Um, any uh, blurring of vision okay. should be asked. Um, <coughs> then any focal neurological deficits associated with the headache. Okay. Any aggravating living factors? Uh, um, any fever? No, okay. fever was not there. Okay. Um, aggravating. Any photophobia, phonophobia mm -hmm. can be asked. And uh, relieving with med, um, analgesics or. Okay. Fair. And then you also found that the patient was having an elevated blood pressure. Yeah, right? Right. What about when she presented to the outside hospital? Uh, what is the uh, blood pressure there? Uh, 210. 210. Okay. Fine. Um, on, uh, we had given a telma 40 mg oh. orally. Okay. Uh, since the diagnosis was <coughs> hypertensive urgency with no end organ damage, we started with oral antihypertensives. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and we had sent for um, uh, routine blood investigations. Uh, urea was 13.5, creatine was 0.72, and uh, sodium was 138.8, potassium was 4. There was no proteinuria. <coughs> and uh, we had done an echo, echo was normal, no LVH uh, um, and a renal artery Doppler was came to be a normal study. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we had um, admitted her for the evaluation for uh, and ophthalmology consultation was done which showed a grade 1 hypertensive retinopathy. Okay, fine. So, what is your diagnosis, final diagnosis? Um, hypertensive urgency. Okay. Like, what do you say so? Uh, because BP was about around 200 by 100 millimeters of mercury with no end organ damage was there. Okay, but how many readings we have to label it as hypertensive urgency? Only one reading is enough or? Three. Basically, at that point, patient was having pain also, no? So, mm. any patient who is having pain can have an elevated blood pressure mm. than the normal, right? So, mm. multiple readings is ideally required and uh, after the headache is subsided, how was the BP is also important, mm. right? Okay, just after analgesics, how is the BP? That's also an important before labeling it as a hypertensive urgency. But since you told it is hypertensive urgency, do you want to tell anything more about hypertensive urgency? Like what, uh, how will you define it? And uh, hypertensive urgency, the BP uh, will be more than 180 bar 110 mm -hmm. and uh, without any end organ, end organ damage. If mm -hmm. there is end organ damage, it will be hypertensive emergency. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and uh, if it is urgency, we can try with oral antihypertensives mm -hmm. initially. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is emergency, we will have to give IV uh, antihypertensives and uh, we should not 
reduce the BP suddenly, it means uh, 10 to 15 percent of the MAP should be reduced in first one hour and um, about 20 percent in the... Yeah, it's the other way around, right? Like if, if you are you're only going to treat if it is really high and your target reduction is 15 to 20 percentage in first 20, uh, first one, one hour, hour and followed by 10 to 15 percentage in, in the, the next, next 24 hours. hours. Right, that's basically 23 hours. Yeah. That is in most, most diagnosis. Is there any exceptions to this rule? Uh, if there is um, IC bleed is there, mm -hmm. then we can reduce. Okay, uh, since you have jumped to IC bleed, fine. Once you have an intraparenchymal bleed, what else comes into the picture in hypertensive management? Is it going to be just your BP or something else? Brain edema. So it is your, what is going to determine your uh, BP control? It is ideally your Midline. cerebral perfusion Midline. pressure. Okay, yeah. what is CCP uh, formula? MAP minus IC. So it is your MAP minus IC. your ICP. So ideally your CCP is what you are going to target once you have an intraparenchymal bleed. And your CCP target has to be ideally between 50 to 70. Okay, so you have in an ideal world it should be a continuous ICP monitoring. Which can be achieved either through an EVD or any other uh, channels. So once you have the uh, uh, ICP at say 40 or 50, then naturally your systolic blood pressure target will also vary accordingly to match a cerebral perfusion pressure of target 50 to 70. Got it, no? Right. So that is with regards to intracranial. Uh, but the question was again, uh, any other? Pulmonary edema. Atic dissection. Then definitely you, you will, end, we, most likely we will end up reducing it faster. Okay. So uh, how will you, how will you, once you say hypertensive urgency, what are the various things which will come into that broad heading? Okay. Based upon the etiology. So you can start from head and move down. Neurological, what all the things which can usually present as hypertensive emergencies? You told about one thing that is. Headache can be the. No, etiological point of view. You can have, you told about intracranial hemorrhage, hemorrhage right? Anything right. else neuro, neurological? Space occupying. Oh, the next thing will be an acute stroke, right? Mm -hmm. Stroke again, the, your BP management is different, right? Mm -hmm. So you have an, a primary intracranial hemorrhage or a thrombotic or embolic stroke. So there, how are you going to manage the BP? Um, if it is more than 200 systolic, we will have to. Reduce. Good. So okay. basically there the, the, uh, the management will be based upon what you are going to or how you are going to treat. If the patient is within a window period and you are going to give the patient a thrombolytic therapy then your target is going to yes, be different. Thrombolysis. What's the yeah, target? The thrombolysis <coughs> we need to no, no. To thrombolysis what should be the BP? Less than 185 by 105. Yeah. So 185 by 100, right? So. Basically, otherwise your, your target is different. If you are going to manage medically without thrombolysis, then the target can be 220 by 110. Okay, only if it, the BP is above that, we are going to treat the BP in an acute kind of situation. For thrombolysis and after thrombolysis, as you told, the target is over. Okay, that is with stroke. Okay, any primary IC bleed, again, without ICP monitoring and everything, what we usually target is 160 by 90. Got it? Mm. So that is with brain. What else can cause hypertensive urgency? Mm. Brain cardiac mm. Next, next will be? Mm. Okay. If you are coming down to chest, then mm. pulmonary edema. Okay. And pulmonary edema, what how, how are you going to manage and what are, okay. For brain, what will be the drug of choice, by the way? Lamictal. Yeah, you can definitely go with lamictal. Mm. Okay. Fine. Or hydralazine, if you have IV hydralazine, is also a reasonable kind of an option. Now we are moving moving on to pulmonary edema with uh, elevated blood pressure. There, how, what will be your drug of choice? Diuretics. <coughs> diuretics will be the first. Uh, the first line. line will be initially we will be managing with diuretics and oh. MTG. Oh. Okay, so that will come as a second line. In cardiac kind of uh, etiologies, you don't usually prefer labetalol or hydralazine. Mm. Okay, fine. So the, there again, you use give your IV diuretics and NTG, and then you monitor with the same target principles as we told before. Mm. Okay, fine. What else? Aortic dissection. Aortic dissection. Okay. There, how is how are you going to treat? Um, rapidly, we have to reduce with uh, labetalol. Yeah. Initial choice will remain again uh, labetalol or beta blockers, basically. Mm. Okay. Fine. Then, and also uh, along with that, you will add nitroprusside or whatever is needed. Mm. Fine. Okay. So that is with that then. Fear chromocytoma. Fine. And other renal causes will come in. Okay. Right. Okay. What else you want to say? Uh, no. Beta blockers are relatively 
not a first line drug in pheochromocytoma. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to first add an anti uh, alpha blocker followed okay. by a vitamin. Uh, CKD causing hypertension. Mm -hmm. Okay, there? Uh, renal, renal, renal causes, causes of hypertension, right? Okay, there what are you going to do? Mm, diuretics. Again, uh, diuretics will, will come into picture. What else? Labyrinth. NTG again can, uh, can be used or labetalol? Okay, mm -hmm. fine. What are the usual ECG changes in hypertension? Um, ECG, we can have uh, LVH. Uh, LVH features in ECG mm -hmm. that is in V5, uh, V5 or V6 the positive waves and mm -hmm. the uh, negative waves in V1 should uh, if they add the small squares it should be more than if it is more than 35 small square then mm -hmm. it is uh, uh, suggestive of uh, hypertension long standing hypertension ok um, anything else in ECG ok fine QR, um, one a QRS in AVL should be more than 12 mm it is also suggestive of LVH. Okay. In echo, what are you looking echo, for? Echo, we will look for concentric LVH, mm -hmm. uh, the concentric LVH thickening, mm -hmm. and um, any RWMI causing any MI. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then? Uh, then um, abdomen, um, USC abdomen can be done for any uh, renal parameters. In cortico-medullary differentiation, we can find if that is a CKD may be the reason for the hypertension. Okay. Then uh, in young uh, hypertension, we can also look for renal artery stenosis. Mm -hmm. What do you need for that? Renal artery Doppler okay. should be done. Okay. Then? And then uh, urine routine, we can look for um, any proteinuria mm -hmm. uh, or hematuria can be checked. Mm -hmm. um, and in the blood, we can look for any... Um, uh, in the BB, ABG, we can look for any metabolic um, alkalosis or hypokalemia can be done. Mm -hmm. So, um, if it is, it can, the differences can be, one is the usage of diuretics or the corn syndrome, hyper, 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 primary hyperaldosteronism. Mm -hmm. Then, fundoscopy can be done with for uh, ret hypertensive retinopathy. Um, What's the other use of looking at the eye? Papillidium. Okay. Then? Also, yeah. as you told, for the secondary papilledema and the secondary changes of hypertension, yes. right? Okay, then. Cardiac enzymes. Mm -hmm. Again, coming to the primary cardiac causes. No? Fine. Cardiac enzymes and and papilledema. What else? Antipropion. What's the relevance of antipropion? Um, if it is elevated, we can uh, know. Um, can be concluded as the cardiogenic cause. Okay. Then? Anything else? Yeah. Other etiologies, anything you want to add? Um. Nothing else. <laughs> Anybody else? I mean, you want to add thing? Evan? That already told. Then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay.